Hi, good evening, afternoon to everyone who is watching and I'm Dr. Philip McMillan and I'm here to share with you some more of the research around the COVID-19. Anyone who has been following me will realize that I'll try and keep you up to date on all the latest breakthrough bits of information so that you have a good understanding of what's happening with regards to the disease and the pandemic. My research has been focused on autoimmunity as the primary cause of severe disease in COVID-19. That's something that you can learn a little bit more of if you want to join me on the community of Substack. And here you have Vision Health, Everything COVID-19, posts, podcasts, and videos since March 2020. And that's when I had started the research on COVID-19. So today I'm leading with this statement. There can be no follow the science without routine autopsy. And just to clarify a bit more, when we say autopsy, I've gone and got the dictionary definition, a post-mortem, meaning after someone has died, examination of a body to discover the cause of death or the extent of disease. That's autopsy. And it's the foundation of uh, Western medicine because this is how we understand disease, primarily through pathological and histological, that means under a microscope, examination of tissue. This is how it works. So why is this relevant? How can we be following the science without routine autopsy? Well, here is the important thing. This paper, High Viral Loads, What Drives Fatal Cases of COVID-19 in a Vaccinees, an Autopsy Study. And in order to understand where this came from, uh, this here is the paper, High Viral Loads, What Drives Fatal Cases of COVID-19. It was primarily done by researchers from hematology and oncology um, in Augsburg, Germany. And they were then focused on looking at autopsy studies with regards to what was going on. Now, there's an important point that I want to highlight just before I shift away from the importance of this paper. And it was close to the end of the paper uh, where the researchers said a very important thing in their discussion and I'll show this to you right here. And I'll bring this up um, on full screen. So uh, let me just get myself out of the way. And here is the important thing. Discussion, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first that's it here. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first series of autopsies of fatal cases in COVID-19 in SARS-CoV-2 vaccinated individuals. I repeat that. It's the first series of fatal cases. Now, you have to remember that in reality, uh, we are now 18 months down the line from starting a uh, vaccination programs. And the first autopsy series has just been published. That's really, really important because it comes back to the fundamental question. How can we be following the science if we have not been doing routine autopsy? Now, I'm just going to give you a few highlights about what I am going to be sharing with the abstract. Now, I'm not going to be sharing it right now, and I want to encourage you again to join me on Substack because that's where I'm going to give you the details about what I am seeing in this very first paper. Um, I, I think one has to be careful with what one speaks about, and on Substack, I think I'm a little bit more free to share some of these concepts without having to worry about the issues around censorship. So here is the abstract of the paper. And so again, let me get myself out of the way. And so in this paper here, there are a few areas that I have highlighted as being important. 
And you can see here the first thing. They compared it to 141 non-vaccinated controls and they performed autopsies on 16 partially vaccinated and 13 fully vaccinated individuals. So that's 29 cases in total. So in effect, we technically only have 29 autopsies since we started vaccinating in um, large populations. It's about December 2020. What they noticed is that a significantly increased rate of generalized viral dissemination with hidden organ systems in vaccinated cases versus non-vaccinated cases, 45 versus 16%. I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about why that's important when I look at the principle of what we need to study in terms of COVID-19 and how to interpret what we're seeing from the autopsy cases as we continue along. The other thing is that they had high rates of uh, pulmonary, bacterial and mycotic superinfections and the occurrence of immunocompromising factors like malignancies, immunosuppressive drug intake or decreased immunoglobulin levels. And again, I'll be able to take you through a little bit more as to what that means in the context of what we're looking at with these cases. And one of the final points to highlight is the potential role of antibody dependent enhancement. So are these questions that we should be asking now, as opposed to having asked these questions easily six months down the line? And one of the points that I reflected on is why has this taken so long? And so I went back to some of the, the rules with regards to what we would see from the pathologists. And here I have um, uh, quickly uh, the, from the UK, the requirements for mortuary staff, pathologists and pathology technicians, they needed gloves, they needed fluid resistance, surgical masks, filtering face piece, class three, FFP, iron face protection. And so the importance of this is that very early in the pandemic, it was an issue with regards to how exposed our pathologists would be to this very dangerous virus. And you can understand that no one would want to do that without really good reason. And my worry is that what has happened beyond this is that we now have a situation where we still don't have pathologists generally focused on this. The CDC has a very similar uh, pattern with regards to their rules or laboratories should form a site uh, activity specific risk assessment, handling specimens in relation to COVID-19, face shields, storage of the human specimens. Main point is that it's, it's just been a little bit difficult, I think, for pathologists, because I would like to believe that all pathologists would be very curious as to what is happening in terms of COVID-19. So um, the principle still is, how can we be following the science without routine autopsy. And the final bit of encouragement that I'd want to take to get you to come and join me with regards to Substack is to show you where I'll be discussing some more details. So this here is from the paper. Uh, this is what we call the supplementary content, supplementary table one. And this looks in detail at each case, cause of death, um, the associated comorbidities, it looks at time from the first symptoms. Uh, it looks for what kind of SARS-CoV-2 they identified. Um, and critically here, uh, you can see a bit closer, changes in the lung parenchyma. That's what happens to the lung in relation to each and every case. So this is very valuable information for which it will take a little bit longer than a few minutes for me to go through. But if you want to understand a little bit more about the disease and what is happening, this is the very first autopsy series. Again, I encourage you, join me on Substack. That's where I'll be able to share a lot more information about what is probably going on. And more importantly, what I'm concerned about with regards to what we are seeing. Remember the principle. There can be no follow the science 
if we are not doing routine autopsy, because this is the foundation of Western medicine and the practice that we have in terms of what we do. So please, I hope you found this information valuable with regards to understanding that this is critical and we need lots more autopsy cases to be able to try and understand what is the difference between the unvaccinated and the vaccinated in terms of what causes death. Is it the same mechanism? And what is very clear from this, this limited autopsy theories is that there is a difference. And this is what we need to understand in terms of how to protect lives, what to look out for in the future. How do we approach the next phase of the pandemic. Thank you very much for joining me. And again, as my outro, I encourage you to join me on Substack, where I'll share some more information about this very, very important topic. Have a good evening.